Hi, this is Miss Pam from the after school program at Connor's School. Welcome back to Art and Sports. Today we are going to do um, uh, bowling. And what I have in front of you for art is a bowling pin. And I decorated a bowling pin. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Then I'm going to explain to you some of the rules for bowling inside in your home. My art is a bowling pin, and what I did is I have done a couple of these, and what you do is you get a magazine and you cut out strips like this. Just strips, and they can be of anything. Flowers, lines, colors, food, anything that you think you might like. Um, I do a lot of the cutting, and then I just put them aside if I don't use them, so that I always have some to go by. Um, but once you get those cut, you can just put them in an envelope, or I keep mine in a magazine. So, what you're going to do is try to get them uh, as even as you can. Now, this one I didn't. So, when I go to use it, if I don't like it, I can just do the snip off it. Okay? All right. So, what we need to get started is we need uh, our plastic underneath, because we're going to be gluing. We need glue sticks. We need magazines, newspapers. Um, I often use junk mail that comes, uh, and I clip that up. I get some magazines and some pliers and all that stuff, and they sometimes have pretty colors on it. Um, we're going to need uh, a piece of paper that has a bowling ball on it, and that's how we're going to start. So we take our, our bowling ball. And the first thing we do is we start and we look through magazines and find colors that we like and strips that we like. When we're ready to go, we just take a glue stick and we just start gluing on. Now, and the, this one was a, a different one because the, um, the bottom is small and the top is small, so you really don't have to cut long ones. But I usually do anyway. So I will take, I will try to measure mine down here. If you can see down at the bottom where my hand is. <laughs> and I would usually cut it so that I can use the extra piece somewhere. Okay, so I take my scissors. And, oh, in the back it was a nice blue that I used on something else. But I think this time I'm going to do a purple. I'm going to do a really wild one this time. So I'm just going to put glue. And my glue stick is old, but that's okay. It should work. And I just glue it on down to the bottom. And I try to get a little bit straight as I can. If it's a straight thing, it needs to be straight. And then what do I want to do? Oh, well, let's see if this fits. That looks like a pretty purple to me. I think I might just use that. I think I just might use that. I'm going to take and I'm going to, I think I'm just going to take and just cut that like that. I'm going to grab a different glue stick that might work better. I always have a problem with glue sticks because they stick, <laughs> and I ripped it. But that's okay. I still like it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue it on and try to patch it. <laughs> so there is my there is my purple or purple, and I may just decide to do an all purple one. So when you get going, you don't have to decide ahead of time. You basically just have to keep cutting and just gluing. Okay, so that's mine so far. I have a bright kind of a color on the bottom, bright purple, and then I have a, a flower there, and then I just go on. And you know, I kind of like this one for the next one. Yeah, I think I'll use that one. Um, they don't have to be even. In other words, they don't have to be um, all the same width. Um, you can have the same size, which are harder to make, by the way, or you can uh, make thin ones, thick ones, whatever fits. Okay, so right now I have a purple, a flower, and I have a coloring thing. All right, I don't know if you can see that, but that's what that looks like right now. Ooh. Well, you get an idea. I'm getting a, a, a tripod, so this won't happen again, I hope. Okay, um, so that's what we're going to do all the way up on this. When you're done, you're going to turn it over, and when you turn it over to cut it, you can see the lines of the bowling pin. And then you're just going to cut all the way up through that bowling pin all the way around. And then when it comes out, it's going to look like mine. 
Now I cut mine out. I cut mine out and I put it on white paper and then I put it on blue paper. And I don't know why I did that because I wanted the blue uh, to come out because a lot of what I have is the blue or the green strips. Okay, so just design it any way that you want to. So that's our art for bowling. Now there is a bowling uh, video that I've done and I will attach that to this. Um, but I want to show you a couple things. Um, this is a bowling, if you can see it, this is a bowling that my son and I started. The video you're going to see is my son and I and we're doing some bowling inside. And these, this is a score sheet. Um, and if you can see it, uh, Pam and Rick. So the first time that I bowled, I got five pins down out of ten. The second time, because you get two chances, I bowled five more. So I've got ten here. So my score for the first bowling round is ten. Then I bowled three, then I bowled four, and I got seven here. So when you're done, you're going to add all these up across and get your total score to see who's the winner. Okay? And yes, right now we're even. I did that on purpose. But he did a 10 over here. And that means he got a strike, which means he got all of them down the first time. If you do that, you do not get a second time. The next time he bowled, he got a 5 and a 2. So he got a 7. So we both are at a at 17 at a tie. Okay, so that's how we started. That's what you're going to see when you see us bowling. In your packet, you're going to have um, the bowling ball I told you, and you're going to have a blank bowling sheet. Okay? So that will be in your packet as well. So I want to talk just a little bit about, about bowling. Okay? It's made up of frames. You saw those frames in the um, bowling score. These are the little frames up top. Okay, and That's how you keep score. Um, if you bowl, I told you what a strike was, that you get them down all at once. What I didn't tell you was you can also get something called a spare. And so if you bowl twice and in both times your total comes up to 10, that means you've got a spare. So if you got all of those across in 10 boxes, that would be 10 times 10 is 100. So you probably uh, would win, okay? Um, the hard part about bowling uh, when we do it at home is you need to have a place that's off a rug. And in my house, we had it in my bedroom and we just rolled up the carpet and on one side of the room, we put the pins down and we bowled across the room, which you will see. But to do this inside, I used 10 cups. And they're all, and I just laid them out like this. <laughs> and those are our pins. Okay? So what we do is we take a tennis ball. And we just make sure that these are aligned. Mine are not aligned, but make sure they're kind of all straightened out because you want the best score that you can get. So you want to put this so that they're like, you've got two here, and this one is like right between those two. Two here, right? And right between those two, and then this one is right between those two. See? So, takes a minute to get those right, but if you do it, you get a better score. So, you take your tennis ball, you stand the back of the room and then you just bowl. So how do you do that? You take your ball and you're just going to take it behind you, kind of kneel down and throw the ball across the floor. But you've got not kneel down all the way, but you're just going to take the ball, go down a little bit on your knees, and then throw the ball on the floor. Okay? Um, my son likes to do it fast. I like to do it slow. And you notice we got the same score. The reason I'm saying you have to kind of bend down on your knee is you do not want these to hit the windows. So just be really careful, okay? We had, a, we had great fun doing this. This was fun, I have to say. So enjoy, and um, thanks for listening. Bye.